Okay, let's end with one that has an inverse trig function and an e in it. So we want to do one that has both of those. First thing you're going to do with these kind of problems is take the derivative. In order to do the derivative of inverse cosine, we have to remember the formula that goes with that. The formula for that is negative u primed over the square root of 1 minus u squared. The u in this case is going to be e to the x. Okay, so let's apply that formula. We have a negative on top. The derivative of e to the x is itself. Okay, so we get negative e to the x. On the bottom, we have the square root of 1 minus u squared, 1 minus e to the x squared. We can simplify that. Negative e to the x over the square root of 1 minus, that's going to be e to the 2x because you're going to multiply the exponents. Once you find the derivative, the next thing to do is to try and find the critical numbers. Critical numbers can be found two ways. The first way is to set the derivative equal to zero. So let's start with that. Zero equals negative e to the x over square root of one minus e to the two x. So we can write this as zero over one, and then we're gonna cross multiply on this. We multiply that, we get negative e to the x. And then zero times the square root is just gonna give us zero. Now, in order to solve for this, I would have to take the natural log of both sides, but we can't do natural log of zero, so therefore, nothing will make this zero. So therefore, we don't get any critical numbers by trying to set the derivative equal to zero. But remember, there's another way we can find critical numbers. And that's where we look at where the derivative is going to be undefined. Now since we have a fraction here, the only place where it could be undefined is a situation where I'm dividing by zero. So I basically just want to look at what x value will make the bottom one equal to zero. And actually all I have to do is look at what's inside the square root because we know square root of zero is zero. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom one, what's inside the square root, and I'm going to set that equal to zero to try and solve. Okay, so if I rearrange here, I get e to the 2x is going to equal 1. And now this, I am able to take the natural log of both sides because you can take the natural log of 1. Natural log of 1 is going to be 0. And then this, natural log of e is going to cancel and we get 2x equals 0. And so then I get x equals 0. So I do get a critical number here for this particular problem. So the question is, well, What's going to happen with this? What does the graph actually look like? Well, instead of looking at the graph, I'm actually going to look at a table of values. Now, first thing we have to look at is know what kind of values to put on our table. Now, because we have an inverse cosine, when you take the inverse cosine of something, the number that you have inside has to be between negative 1 and 1. So, if I put in something like a 1 for x, that's going to be too big because then I get e to the 1, which is like 2.7 that's going to be too big. So as it turns out, 0 is actually the biggest number that we could put into here. e to the 0 is 1, but if I go any more than that, even if I put 0.1 in there, that's going to give me a number inside that's bigger than 1. So therefore, I know that 0 is the biggest number I can try. So what I want to do is I want to try and put some values in that are less than 0 and see what kind of values I'm getting on the graph. So I'm going to do that over here. What I'm going to do is make a x and y uh, table. Okay, so I have an f, x and, uh, f of x table. So the first number I'm going to put in is 0. I want to get the y value from that. So if I put a 0 in here, that's inverse cosine of e to the 0, so inverse cosine of 1. I take the inverse of the inverse cosine of 1, if I look at the unit circle, I'm looking for any, any angle where the x value is equal to 1 because that's what a cosine refers to. If I look at that, I'm going to get 0 as a result. So 0, 0 is one point that's on there. But what I want to do is I want to try some other points that are less than 0. So maybe I'll try negative 1, negative 2, negative 10. I want to try some other numbers to see what's actually happening on this. 
So I'm just going to make a table of values. Now these are arbitrary values. You can pick any values you want, but I'm just going to try some larger numbers to see if I, get, if I get any kind of asymptotes or something like that happening on this one because that's going to tell me if it's going to have an absolute max or not. All right, so if I put these numbers in, I, do, I work these out separately. So if I do negative, uh, negative 1, 1.19, and then if you do negative 2, 1.43, negative 10 is going to be 1.5708, and in fact, even 100 to 4 places, we actually get the same number. So I'm purposely putting this in to see what the graph is doing. What's actually happening here is this is going to have a horizontal asymptote. Now how we know that is because as, the, as we put in other numbers, as it gets closer and closer to negative infinity, these numbers are getting closer and closer to 1.57. To be exact, this is actually pi over 2. So what's going to happen here is the graph itself, it starts at 0, 0, and then it ends up having some kind of a horizontal asymptote 1.57 and if you were to take a look at the graph, it would look like this. And the table actually tells us that that's happening. So what we know about this is that because you have a horizontal asymptote, the graph is actually never going to reach that value of the horizontal asymptote. Therefore, we know that it's not going to have an absolute max. But what I do know about it is I'm gonna, I will have an absolute min at 0, 0. So what you would write here is absolute min of 0 at x equals 0. That's what you would write for your answer. And again, these kind of problems were asking to find the extreme value, you're going to have a multiple choice situation on the, uh, the online homework that you do with it, and you would be able to select this as one of your answer choices. So therefore, uh, it has an absolute minimum of 0 at x equals 0.